Hi everyone and welcome to your horoscope for the week of March the 21st, 2022. We have an active and really powerful sky at play. This is a week which will require a lot of adaptation in so very many different ways because the energy shifts in a very significant way and basically just as the energy changes in the sky it kind of drags us with it. It pulls us on a soul level, psychologically, of our moods, of our attitude. Many of us are going to feel the urge to begin anew or at least embody one way or another, a way specific to us and, you know, according to our possibilities, the feeling of new renewal, new beginning, anything that has to do with something fresh and new, for the sun has entered into the sign of Aries, the astrological new year, the spring equinox in my part of the world, and that represents the first breath. It does represent where something deep within our instinctual self, that part of us which is intimately connected to nature and her cycles, well, that part wants to begin anew, it wants to be born, it wants to bloom, it wants to blossom, it wants to come out and play, and chances are we need to allow. But at the same time, it's not as easy as that, because we do have Jupiter, Neptune, and this week, Mercury remaining in Pisces. So this week is going to feel like being trapped between the past and the future, and unfortunately, the present isn't really something stable, reliable, available. We may not find it very easy to ground ourselves in the present at this time. Not just because Mercury is still in the sign of Pisces and it makes key connections with Jupiter and Neptune, so those will influence us very, very deeply on a mental level, emotional level as well. And that energy is all about the past, it is heavily karmic, it can represent any kind of unfinished business, emotional or of any nature. It can also represent our memories, our feelings, our emotions, traumas or anything, even our most joyful memories that we have experienced and there is a sense of needing to let go regardless of what the past represents for us personally. For some people, maybe it is much more joyful, it is much more beautiful than the present, while for others, it might be full of pain, it might be full of disappointment, it might be full of hardship, but regardless, this is where we need to slowly and surely let it go, we need to release, we need to forgive, and sometimes we even need to forget because we, all of us collectively, and this is where no individual is, is exception to this, we need to step into a, our futures, but a future which is pretty much barren still, we need to construct it. We might have all the constructing materials, which right now is symbolized by Saturn in the sign of Aquarius, so our mental energy, our genius of our intellectual brilliance as individuals and as a species, but under morality, under the guideline of morality, dignity, and the higher qualities of Saturn. And that is what we're working on collectively right now, the dignified part. And it is so very, very obvious the way it is playing out karmically out there. We are being shown a side of reality and all of us, for ourselves, for our own spirits, we have to decide and even judge right now. But as I said, just as a soul, just as a spirit, just as a human being, if the times that we are living right now are dignified, if they do reflect our true morality, or if they actually go against everything that we stand for, because if that is the conclusion, then we need change and we need change urgently, and it is also that change which is part of this week, 
because we still have Mars and Venus in the sign of Aquarius, so a very future-oriented energy, very cerebral, very mental, but it also represents our human interconnectedness, it also represents the power of the people, it also represents our highest morality and its expression, freedom, justice, equality, fraternity, liberty, everything that Uranus, the ruling planet of Aquarius, stands for. On a human level, of course. So all of us are living this our own unique ways, but this is where no one can b represent an exception from this. No one can disconnect themselves from living this because this is something that ha needs to happen to us as a species and all of us are connected. Of course, some people more than others, most of us are connected literally through the internet simply having internet in our homes or our mobile phone, that is a manifestation, an almost perfect embodiment of being interconnected. If internet is basically the humankind's collective consciousness and with all the information and everything stored there, well, us having access to that, well, that already makes us be perfectly connected. Yet even those people, let's say, who all are hermits and living in a cave somewhere, their energy, their psyche in a certain way, a natural way of course, let's say an empathic way, or them living much more truly to nature cycles, that also makes them become interconnected even if they're not that much aware of it as the rest of us. So where I'm going with this is all of us are right now, energetically speaking, are as one. We are very, very strongly interconnected right now. Believe it or not, sense it or not, but I do believe that all of us sense it like very, very strongly. This is where we can almost tell which part of the anxiety we might be experiencing right now is our own and which part is just the burden that we share. It's, it's so, so very obvious, and this is also part of this week's Dance of the Planets, because, as I said, this very future-oriented energy, Aquarius, with Mars and Venus being in this part of the sky, they hold the square to Uranus. Now, Venus' square to Uranus doesn't even have to be that very frightening, because that energy, in its essence, it can have a very surprising, delightful, playful, unusual side, a uh, side of it where we might experience something that is very alien to us and how we do react to that in matters of love, in matters of friendship, in matters of interhuman connection, in matters of, you know, projects we might be working on on the internet, you know, professionally, in so very many ways, regardless of in which area of our lives this Venus is more active, we might experience a surprise in matters of emotion and, of course, value. That, for some people, can be an awkward surprise. It can be even uncomfortable, because that is the very essence of Uranus. But for other people, that doesn't really have to be. It can just simply represent an unexpected new experience which can be very delightful as well. It doesn't have to be bad at, at all. It of course depends on our own configuration psychologically and how open we are to new and chaos and coincidences. But that can also have a playful and, you know, a chaotically nice side. But Uranus is square with Mars and this is the energy that is going to perfect itself on the 22nd of March, now this is highly volatile, Mars in the sign of Aquarius, well, it is the will of the people, it is the future goal, the intent of people, and basically, as I said, Aquarius, human interconnectedness, human species, everyone on the planet, so, you know, that activates Uranus, a very volatile and rebellious energy, an energy that regardless in which way, even physically, demands freedom. It demands the pressure to be released. It demands the eruption. And physically, we could see this play out in the Japan earthquake 
and we can expect a lot of more tectonic and, you know, earth activity in the coming days and even weeks because Uranus is highly active. And when this conversation with Mars is at its peak, it something is bound to explode, something is bound to shake up, Something is bound to be shocked to the core. And as I said, this is just physically. This can play out financially, for example, because Uranus is in the Earth sign of Taurus. So that is value system. That is money. That is, you know, everything that provides our stability and comfort. There can be an earthquake in that sense. And value system, a psychological energy, what our collective holds valuable, and what it doesn't, suddenly it changes. Like, let me give you a very clear example. Perhaps a a year ago just, certain aspects of luxury, may those be items or a lifestyle or a representative, well, they were still admired. Today, in the now, right now, well, luxury is not really seen with good eyes by anyone who has common sense. So this is where something that was admirable, desirable, beautiful, the epitome of beauty, basically, and value, that which was so, so placed on a pedestal just a year ago, today is almost shameful. Today it is almost under a big question mark. It immediately sparks doubt. It immediately sparks... Not necessarily envy, but judgment, better said. And this is definitely a week for that to play out in the world. So we may see this judgment where luxury is heavily criticized, judged, or loses its value overnight. We may see this play out in the world one way or another. And Aquarius, well, it does appear more to the world of celebrities or something that happens on the internet or something that goes viral. But with Mars, well, Mars is the planet of war, basically. So it does mean action. It does mean protest. It does mean people rising up one way or another. Aquarius can represent that the battlefield, symbolically, may be the internet. Humanity's collective consciousness, its symbol, its physical manifestation. So, you know, as within, so without. When there is a conflict in our collective consciousness, well, there is a conflict in our individual consciousness as well. So we are going to feel that individually also. Of course, we will see this play out in the world. And we, this is already happening, basically. People are really, really unhappy. Venus, their feelings, their values, they don't see their highest principles being respected. So this is where it brews. This is where it boils. This is where the pressure is building up. And if it doesn't detonate this week, it will detonate in April and May. And there are a lot of opportunities when Uranus converses in tension with big power players. And those will be moments when the pressure can suddenly detonate. But individually speaking, we all have our personal war, our struggle, our challenges what it is that we need to urgently accomplish. And chances are, because both Venus and Mars are also close to Saturn, we become aware that we need to input a lot of work, effort, sacrifice, time, or energy, whatever it is that is of a resource, we need to invest that in our futures, and we need to do it now. And we also become aware that it might not be very easy, that challenging times are here for all of us. It's no longer where it's knocking on the door. It's already inside. So we are already living it, experiencing it. And on the sky, this is depicted as Saturn squaring the nodes of the moon. Saturn starting to square the north node in Taurus. And sometimes that can mean scarcity, returning to minimalism, returning to the basics. That can sometimes represent a financial purge a material purge, a loss, but that loss has to go. That loss has to be shed off. And also, it may represent a period when we really need to struggle, we really need to invest a lot of energy, as in to truly sacrifice, not just spiritually, mentally, emotionally, 
but also physically as well, either for our own well-being or for the our cause, for the well-being of others, for or whatever we stand for, whatever means our own personal satisfaction and basically our role in, in on earth in this life. So at least in one area of our lives, we will be reminded of what it is our goal in life, why are we here, and what do we expect from the future. And we will not just have to answer these questions that will come from our soul, basically, but we will also need to take some action, Mars. And the Mars squaring Uranus can also play out as sudden, unexpected, but bigger than life opportunities that will sweep us off our feet. And if we can manage to get up, if we can stand up and somehow grab hold of the opportunity before it disappears with quantum speed, then we accomplish something big. Then we have made a big leap of faith. But chances are for most of us, the opportunity might intimidate us a lot. So we have to seek for other ways. We have to make certain compromises with ourselves, with life, with destiny. But that still is very, very progressive. That still leads us to where we need to be. So every kind of action, every kind of decision, every kind of brainstorming is very, very constructive right now. And this energy of, because this ultimately does represent that we will face our worries, right? But this is a direct contrast to the lingering Pisces energy. Because as I said, Jupiter, Mercury, and Neptune are still in this part of the sky. And that is karma, that is the past, that is our unconscious, that is our emotional world, that is our connection to the spirit, that is basically the stage for karma to play out. So we might be urged by inner or outer forces to quickly do what we can for our future, to work, to begin anew, to finally take action and to start building something, creating something. But at the same time, many of us are still caught in the past. We are trapped in the past because fate needs to complete itself. And this is also very, very personal. We, many of us still need closures. Many of us still need a door in our lives to be finally shut for good. For some, this might be just symbolic, emotional. This might be just a forgiveness, just a goodbye, just the decision to start healing and getting better and not focusing so much on what happened and all the disadvantages a shift of perspective for others still it can be material it can be something that they need a word they need to hear or them to still play out maybe a small part of the destiny that hasn't still happened for any kind of reason and chances are this happens this finishes this completes this week because mercury first it will conjunct jupiter at the very, very beginning of the week, so on the 21st, and this Mercury and Jupiter conjunction, well, it can represent, you know, psychologically certain tricks of the mind. It can represent us contemplating, philosophizing, being lost in fantasy, the past, the future, etc., etc., or escapism, substances, alcohol, a certain kind of excess where we feed the mind with fantasy, with illusion, and even an excessive use of spirituality, if that makes sense, where we overdo the ritual a little bit, where we go into absurd with our faith. It's nothing bad, but this might be the disadvantageous side of the energy. The advantageous side of the energy, we know our truth. We get connected, aligned, one way or another, with what is our most sacred truth. Jupiter in Pisces, the truth, the justice, the very divine identity of our souls. And Mercury, the planet of the mind, aligns with that. Of course, this is not a cerebral energy, because we can only understand it with the soul, with the heart, with what Pisces is. But still, it is a huge boost in faith, in 
optimism, in thirst for living our dreams and finding the inner strength to invest even more energy into accomplishing our dreams, even if that means chasing our happiness. But at the end of the day, this Jupiter also holds the wisdom that it's never ever getting what we want that matters in life. It is the magic of the journey. And the wisdom in this is actually literal. It is actually never ever about the final destination or getting the big prize. The journey will always outvalue the ultimate prize. And this week it is such a blessing that we live it, we feel it and we turn this into pure emotional and spiritual power. Then later on this Mercury is going to be sandwiched between Jupiter and Neptune, the two kings, the two rulers of Pisces. It is Jupiter's nighttime expression of mysteries, of the infinite where everything is possible. And then there's Neptune, the divine illusion, but ultimately everything in life is just a dream. And Mercury gets empowered by both of these planets. Mercury gets expanded. Mercury gets into Neptune mode, so in touch with the infinite. It might feel like sheer madness. It might feel that we truly lost our minds and we no longer understand anything. But it can feel as living our faith. It can feel as living something totally out of the ordinary, which favors us. If we get into the flow, if we get into the magic, if we get into the basically karmic vibe of this energy, then it will work in our favor. And this Mercury, in, it, in its most intuitive, in its most non-linear expression, in the detriment of Pisces, it's prison. But sometimes it is actually prisons hospitals, confinement, isolation, which heals the most, which does the most good. It is sometimes when we boil in our own juice, when we make the best, best decisions ever. And right now, it is our soul, it is our unconscious that is doing exactly that. So staying hopeful and allowing this energy, which is a little bit maddening, as I said, I'm not going to lie here, There is a saying that mystics swim in the same waters that psychopaths drown in. Well, this is where we have to swim and we won't drown. We will definitely not drown. You know, when Mercury is so disadvantaged, when it loses itself in the domain of Pisces and these connections with Jupiter and Neptune, they weigh heavily on Mercury. It is uncomfortable for Mercury to to hold this energy, to embody this energy which is not rational. It cannot be explained. It is just a dream. It is just a philosophy. It is just a principle. There is nothing real in it. But if it gives into it, it becomes pure miracle. Because when the mind stops seeking seeking answers, when the mind just believes, things do happen. And we will need this aura of magic and mystery and big closures, big forgivenesses, big terminations of karma in so very many people's lives because this will help us cope with the Mars and Uranus square, which is anxious, which is fearful, which is facing our insecurities, our instability, not being grounded. And if we add Venus, then there's money problems all over the world, Saturn squaring the North Node, imminent scarcity, imminent restrictions on a material level, but this is where the restrictions are not even ordered by someone. We have to do the right thing for our own survival. So the restrictions come from us, actually. And we will see this at the end of the week when Venus on the 25th meets Saturn in the sky That will be a strong, strong, strong reality check financially, but also in matters of love. This doesn't necessarily mean anything negative, because what the what could Venus with meeting a Saturn in Aquarius mean? Well, let's just take the most basic example. 
we will have to decide with our heart, Venus, but also rationally, Saturn, like analyzing the situation, which of our friends, acquaintances, connections, some people from our circle of friends are we bringing with us into the future and which of them we have to cut out because they no longer represent who we are, especially when the world changed so much overnight. So everything changes, so we have to have this reality check in any way, shape and form to see what is viable and what is not viable because we are not living in the same world that we lived like three months ago, not to mention a year ago. When reality changes this drastically overnight, this is what has to happen. Even if we lived this through the millionth time, because this is all we had the past three to four years, still, this is our being's natural reaction to this kind of change. We ask ourselves the question, what do we value? And we have to seek the answer again and again and again, even if we found it already. When times and reality change, well, there is a chance for the answer to change as well. So we just follow what our instinct dictates. And also, we must remember, healthy faith questions itself. And that means a healthy value system also has to always question itself. If it's in tune with what we truly feel, or is it just something that we inherited and we didn't want to change? Out of sheer comfort, so to speak. So it's very, very difficult to stay in tune with these energies because they act like an inner domino. They just press certain buttons within us. And you don't have to listen to my horoscope or any astrologer's horoscope, but this energy still plays out within you automatically, aware of it or not. Also, at the very beginning of the week, the asteroid Juno, uh, the symbolism of commitment, Jupiter's wife, is also conjunct Saturn. That represents which connections, which commitments, and that can also represent contract, for example, anything, are we taking with us into the future and which we have to abandon. So basically, this can represent so very many different things for a few people, yes, of course, it's their marriage or relationship. But for most of us, it can be the internet contract, phone contract, any kind of agreement. Reality changes, so even contracts change with it. The banks change their terms and conditions. Someone, something changes terms and conditions. And we have to reevaluate. So this week is going to be one of those weeks when terms and conditions quickly change. Then, around the 26th sorry, of March, we have Mercury in an erratic position of the sign of Pisces. Now, Mercury is debilitated in part, this part of the sky, and the an erratic position, 29 degree, adds a lot of extra pressure on it. So, this might be a very fated day when something really significant happens. For example, we coincidentally meet someone from the distant past, a neighbor, a relative, a schoolmate, and we have this big re revelatory conversation when we just look back at the past and judge everything that happened, not just from our own perspective, but from that very special person's perspective, adding to our own experience, so to speak. But, of course, some meetings will be permanent part of the future as well, because this energy can also represent big reunions, big connections, the bond being reborn, the bond being reestablished, or a chapter which was suddenly broken in the past can suddenly just resume as quickly as, as, as it was abandoned or left behind. The story continues where it was left behind. This can also represent big apologies. This can also represent big information, very important truth, especially those of sentimental nature, reaching us from relatives or coincidentally or paranormally. Because whenever Mercury is in 29 degrees of the sign of Pisces, 
a scorpionic deacon of this sign, there is a lot of paranormal activity that day. And then on the 27th, the very end of the week, Mercury will follow the sun into the sign of Aries, and this will represent a really, really strong energy shift. Now, Mercury, as I said, in the sign of Pisces, where he will spend all of the week, it is in what astrologers call in detriment imprisoned because this is the opposite sign of Virgo and Mercury is in exaltation. It is extra powerful in this part of the sky and it is, it is also its ruling sign. So Mercury is not able to bring forward its highest qualities in the sign of Pisces. Mercury is rational. Mercury is very, very quick. Mercury ri likes concrete, basically. Mercury can be seen like a very, very quick running stream where the sign of Pisces is like an infinite ocean. The water doesn't really move in the ocean like it does in the river. So Mercury is not able to be itself. It cannot move quickly into direction like a river. Mercury likes to move in one direction. It likes to reach its target, the destination. It likes to travel. In Pisces, it, it can because Pisces is infinite. It has no rules. It has no substance even because it is just a dream. It is an illusion. It is the realm of the divine. And even physically, it is the divine within us because it is our unconscious. Unconscious is accepted by science, by empirical science, by the scientific community as something that is ultimately real. But it is not physical. It is not real. We make it real. It exists for us. So Mercury cannot make that much sense of it unless, as I said, it surrenders. Now Mercury surrendering to the realm and the expression and energy of Pisces is very easy for artists. It is very easy for those people who embody the Piscean energy very, very difficult for those who are extremely anchored, including mentally into physical reality, because those people find this energy maddening. They, they associate it with not being very well psychologically. But regardless of how we react to this energy, it is basically the expression of emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, intuition, you know, and this extra sense that some people are not aware that they have. Now, this changes because Mercury enters into the sign of Aries. Mercury enters into the head, symbolically speaking, so it is very quick there. I'm not saying that it's super efficient because, you know, hot-headed, because Aries is also the quick initiator, courage, bravery, Sometimes in a very uninspired way, aggression, angry words, impulsivity, but also leadership, also taking on any challenge, etc. So where I'm going with this, even if Mercury doesn't think through very, very profoundly, it is action oriented. So it gets things done. It makes the phone call. It makes the confrontation. It speaks, it expresses its willpower, it expresses its choice, its preference, criticism even. So it's quick and it does a lot of things in a very practical way because it means to accomplish. It doesn't mean to negotiate, it means to get things done. And a lot of us are going to enjoy this energy because it is going to be a breath of fresh air. Mercury was very comfortable in Aquarius because it likes being there, but not in 2022 because the internet and media and basically everything that represented Aquarius, well, it was way too much for all of us. But in Aries, I do believe that we are going to benefit much more from a very quick, a very brave, bold, even a little bit foolish, courageous Mercury. Because we had a lot of time to boil things within ourselves. So even when we might speak something that we might not necessarily mean, 
Well, chances are we contemplated that within ourselves for months now, and the time just came for that word or idea, even if it's angry, even if it's impulsive, to leave our being and go to the destination. Now, this might not necessarily be the case once Mercury gets to the end degrees of the sign of Aries when it will square Pluto, but that's another horoscope. Even that energy, as uncomfortable as it may be, it will get things done, a lot of big things. For example, I quit or I'm leaving you, even if it's not that very serious, Either it will truly terminate the job, relationship, or whatever, or it will actually heal it and transform it in the best way possible. Sometimes for healthy friendships, there has to be lashing out and battles, of course. And we also have, before Mercury leaves the sign of Pisces, so around the 26th, it will hold a sextile with Pluto, and as I said... That is also the energy of fated encounters, fated connections, someone returns from the past, a job offer, a career opportunity may return from the past, and you have to choose Mercury in Pisces with your intuition, with your instinct, or with your wisdom, you know, life experience, with everything that you know as a soul. So this is a really, really good aspect for making delicate decisions because the soul actually helps or let's say the divine helps. Like always, I don't want my horoscopes to be doom and gloom, but when Mars converses with Uranus in this type of conversation, a square, and Uranus isn't your sign of Taurus, we have to warn that this can represent, as I said, further earthquakes, seismic activity, the movement of the earth, it can also represent calamity, accidents, massive, massive di- disruption on the internet, solar flare, any kind of fires, fire hazard, anything that has to do with software may bug out, and of course Mars, action, and war, so criminal activity on the internet, cyber terrorism and stuff like that, And we can see how this is already in full swing, in full bloom, playing out on the world stage. And finally, when Uranus and Mars have this type of conversation, I always say pay extra attention next week to anything that has to do with health and safety rules, dry safe, respect, cautions and warnings, and, you know, just basically be aware and take care of yourself Because awareness is the key to avoid any kind of Uranian discharge, if that makes sense. Because Uranus can only strike in a certain domain or in a certain way where we do not have awareness or we don't have awareness in that area, regardless of what that is. If it's something psychological or totally down to earth, Uranus is always needed where we don't have awareness or we have a very false or twisted sense of awareness and then it awakens us to the truth. Uranus just serves the truth. When something explodes, well, ultimately, it explodes because the conditions were set up that way. It is a truth that is being presented to us. When the earth moves and, you know, there is an earthquake or any kind of calamity that is also a truth that this is basically our planet and it's not going to change and we have to get used to it. And naturally, last but not least, it is also the conflict, it is also the destruction, it is also the symbol of misuse of power because ultimately no world leader or no politician is there by, you know, their own strength. Someone empowers them. And this is a reflection of what happens sometimes when we empower irresponsibly. But for every problem, there has to be a solution. And the solution is given to us also by Saturn. Because 
after next week, so the week after, Mars is going to be meeting Saturn in the sky as well. Saturn and Uranus by the ancients were considered as the two malefic planets. Their meeting usually stirs up a lot of chaos, a lot of problems, rules and regulations, Saturn being challenged. But at the same time, this is also Saturn's temptation side. When he just tests us, when he just plays with us. So we have to wait and see what exactly that energy, so the week after, will reveal to us. Because chances are, when the problem becomes crystal clear, and that crystal clear moment kind of coincides with Saturn squaring the North Node in Taurus, then we'll also see the solution, and the solution North Node in Taurus. It is something simple, it is something back to the basics, but very, very highly proficient and effective, and it transforms us for the long term. And its mode of execution, Mars in Aquarius, people joining forces and expressing their sovereign willpower, Mars in the sign of Aquarius. And if Aquarius fights for something, as I said, that is liberty, equality, justice, equity, so everything that has to do with humanitarianism and our highest principles as a human species, we will definitely fight for that one way or another. So this concludes next week's horoscope. Thank you so much for being here and listening. And as a final word of advice, it is going to feel like being trapped in the birth canal. We are just at the exit of the birth canal, Aries equinox, the new beginning, the first breath. We can see the light, but we are deeply, deeply trapped and stuck there and are about to drown, basically. This is Jupiter and Neptune in the sign of Pisces, a very rare energy once every 166 years. So, you no, know, all of us feel the heaviness and the spiritual gravity of that energy. This is where the spirit is inviting us to change. All of this energy and any kind of expression, the COVID, the war, everything that happened to us individually, all the drama, all the dark nights, well, these were meant to transform us, but to transform us by guiding us to the truth, not vice versa. It was not handed down on a silver tray who we are, what we are, what we like, what our true core values are. We had to dig deep and discover them because there was no oracle that magically told it to us. Maybe confirmed it, yes, but only after we dig deeply enough to discover the essence of it, to get the big idea. Then the details came, but we had to see the core truth of who it is that we were created to be 50% and then the other 50% who we created the rest who we generated ourselves to be, what identity we have given to that part of the self which was free, which was in our hands. And this is very heavy. Like, this isn't an easy-to-process time, period, energy, philosophy, what is happening right now. But at the end of the day, we are living it, and it feels this way. It is this heavy. It is this strange. It is this confusing, but at the same time, dichotomously, we've never been so safe within ourselves. So what I'm trying to say here is, we are going to be born. This is just the last push. This is just the last severing of the bond. Because regardless of what happens in the world, let's say, When we're out of the birth canal, well, we can flee, we can run, we can fly, we can swim. Each and every person to their own astrological configuration, what they're good at. For example, those who have a lot of energy in Capricorn, they're climbers. They can, symbolically speaking, adapt themselves to any lifestyle and make something with it. This is where all of us have to, you know, embody our uniqueness, our authenticity, our adaptability, and just go and do what we can 
But first we have to, you know, be born, get out of the birth canal so we can use, you know, our freedom, of our limbs, whatever, however we move in the world, symbolically speaking, so that we can advance to a safer place for us personally. And that safer place, all of this is just philosophy and symbolism. This doesn't mean that we'll fly away. This just means that reality itself will have a meaning for us personally that we can accept, live with, work with, and make it part of our lived experience. So finding ourselves truly, it, it is as simple as that. But what this means concretely, physically, in a down-to-earth way, well, that is where we have to find our own unique stories and live them out. So we are in a period when the pages turn, when the story experiences its next upgraded chapter. But the transition there is definitely not easy. So thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support my channel and my work, you can donate in the PayPal link in the description below. With this being said, thank you for allowing me to play a small part of your journeys and wishing everyone a blessed week. Until next time, bye for now.